tasked with taking all of the mural artwork um, that was created during the 2020 protests and figuring out a way to memorialize it in some sort of way. Uh, my name is Donna Marbury. I'm account director at Warhol and Wall Street, and I was editor of Art Activism Action, the book. Um, and so we came up with this idea for this um, art book, but we wanted it to have presence. We wanted it to be big and bold. When you look at it, you think and feel what? I feel like it's a reflection of Columbus and the art community here. Um, the art community is so strong. Um, and a lot of times people pick up the book and they're like, is this in Columbus? And it's like, yes, like this was probably the biggest display of public art that I've ever seen. It's like, it's not just a select group of people that are like upset or bothered by something. It's a collective of many different spaces that are like, no, this is wrong and we're gonna show representation for it. Hi, I'm Brianna Rhodes, and I am a dancer and poet that was featured in the book. Our vibrant colors make up the art that you are endlessly influenced by. Your white skin erasing that all and calling it yours consistently. Why? Richard Duart Brown, I was a mural painter. That's my part in the book. When I paint, it's like I'm processing. I work I with kids, and, I, and a lot of them have been afraid of the cops, and, and my focus was to paint people that were that, that look for the goal, the outcome, mm -hmm. was to see the kids, you know, not being afraid of living or being stopped by a cop. And a lot of them that were graduating that year, they were fresh on my mind. <laughs> what, what is it like being in the mix of everything taking place? My name is Paul Becker, and I do protest photography primarily in Central Ohio. I think I'm coming from a, also a position of privilege as well, that especially with police and other individuals of power, they're going to view me differently. And some of them viewed as part of the media, and that also comes with privilege, that like when the curfews were in effect, media were exempt. Why do you feel it's your responsibility to hold close these moments that are happening in our community? I think it's important for all the hard work the organizers are doing, the other activists, I want there to be documentation. Um, so during the 2020 protest, I wanted people to see what, how Central Ohio responded. Uh, in 2020, after the murder of George Floyd, uh, we stepped in um, to try and support artists in their action. Jamie Goldstein, Vice President of Marketing for the Greater Columbus Arts Council. And so we, um, we helped pay artists who painted murals throughout downtown. And we felt um, as the local arts council that it was our responsibility to, um, to record this moment in time. It's not a race war. It's not blacks against whites. It's the disenfranchised and the vulnerable trying to grasp the light. Brianna, how has, um, how has or how did 2020 change you? Uh, it was hard. Um, from a spiritual standpoint and just my artistry um, with COVID hitting and everything coming to an absolute halt. I had previously just graduated college. I was trying to figure myself out and there was a lot of figuring myself out. And I wrote this poem called Colorless. They want us to see in black and white, but we ask you to see in color. I think that there are a lot of ways to participate or contribute to a movement. You may not be comfortable public speaking for different reasons, and maybe you can't be out on the street, but you can write down what you're feeling, you can paint, you can take a photo. So I think the year made me a little more intentional about the stories I want to tell and the things I want to be a part of. It, it's, it's significant to have a record of you know, we have to make our own history and tell our own history. I always say that my art is always speaking for those who can't speak for themselves. 